Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to my Swift series. In this video, we're going to be learning about dictionaries. Now let's go ahead and consider a map. A map has a bunch of locations, it has a bunch of features on it, but one of the most important things is a map's legend. Now a map's legend always has a distinct color or distinct object and what it represents. For example, in the most basic map, you'll have blue is water, green is land, so on and so forth. A dictionary works the exact same way. You have a key, which is what you're trying to figure out what it is, and its representative value, okay? So a dictionary exists as a bunch of key value pairs, and then you access a dictionary's value by calling its key. Let's go ahead and create our very own dictionary. I'm gonna go ahead and say bar my dict, and then you're gonna use the exact same square brackets as you use the race. Now, every key value pair is separated by a comma, and to distinguish between the key and the value, you put a colon. So going back on our map example, blue is water and green is land. Okay, so forgot quotation marks there. Close this. Okay, so blue is water. Again, notice the colon and then I have a comma to separate the two distinct pairs and green is land. Now I want to find out, hey, what does blue refer to? All I do is just like an array, I'll put uh, square brackets next to my dictionary name and then in quotation marks, type in the key. So my key is blue, and my dig blue should get me water. Now let's give it a few seconds for it to run our Swift Playground. Um, hopefully it should come. Okay, water, fantastic. Now if you wanna add something to our dictionary, let's say that red is, um, red is bridge, okay? If I wanna update my dictionary with a new value, I can go ahead and say my dict red, okay, is equal to bridge. So updating values is very similar to arrays. With arrays, you just specify that, hey, um, use the .append function. But with dictionaries, to add a new value, just specify the new key, add the new value in, and that is our new key value pair. So printing out my dict gets us print out my dict. We'll get you blue water, green land, and red bridge. Fantastic. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is what happens if I print out. So I'm going to go ahead and print out my dict blue okay so instead of just doing it like this we're printing it out and if you take a look over here um give it a few seconds we get optional now we haven't talked about optionals yet but in swift apple introduced something called optionals and optionals are a type that handles the absence of a value okay optionals basically mean that either there is a value and you know it for sure or there isn't a value at all okay so this question mark or basically this optional means that Swift doesn't know if this has a value or not. For example, I could have said something my dict orange and this doesn't exist. There's no key orange in our dictionary and it's gonna return nil. However, for our one with blue, it does have a key, the blue key exists and it does have a representative water value. That's how we get optional water because Swift isn't sure if our blue key exists or not. To get rid of this optional, we have to force cast it. We have to use an exclamation mark after our sort of statement and say that, hey Swift, this thing over here, this definitely exists. I know for sure it does. By placing this exclamation mark, we just get water and watch. If I make this into something that doesn't exist, it's gonna create an error. Why? Because we're trying to call a key that doesn't exist and we're telling Swift that it does. It has to exist. That's why this error is out. If you remove the exclamation mark, this will work fine. It will give you nil, okay? So again, we'll discuss optionals more later on in our series, later on in the course. But for now, let's just go ahead and understand that, hey, optionals do exist, and to get rid of them, you have to use an exclamation mark. Fantastic. Going back to dictionaries. Okay, so we've understood how to add to a dictionary. You can change what a key represents by just saying my dict blue. And let's say instead of water, I want it to be ocean. So my dig blue is equal to ocean. And now whenever I refer to my blue key, I will always get ocean. That's how you can update a key and update its respective value. The next thing is the remove function. So just like with arrays, we have the remove all function. My dig dot remove all will remove all of the items in our dictionary. We don't want to do that right now. Let's just go ahead and remove one. So we just added red is equal to bridge. Let's go ahead and remove that from our dictionary. So it's going to say my dig the remove value for key. And our key in this scenario is going to be red. So by removing this key, it just removes the value as well. 
And by doing so, our dictionary only has two items. Now, one thing you guys have to notice in a dictionary is that you cannot have two keys that are the same, okay? If I try, you cannot add another key to the dictionary that already exists because that doesn't make sense. If you call my dig blue and there are two keys, two blue keys in our dictionary, Swift won't know which key to use and thus it'll cause an error. So always make sure that every key you have in your dictionary is different. All right, fantastic. Um, that's basically it for dictionaries, guys. Very, very straightforward. The reason why you use dictionaries is later on when you deal with JSON, when you deal with web parsing, your data will be in this sort of dictionary-like format where you have a key and a value. And throughout the, the series and throughout iOS development, you'll be dealing with places where you might have some key and an associated value and we, you'll be using dictionaries. Quick recap, guys. Creating a dictionary, very straightforward. Square brackets, you have colons that separate the two values, comma separate each key value pair, okay? You can update the value just by specifying the key and you can add values by specifying a new key and you can remove values by using the for key method or by removing all the values. Also, my dict has the same properties as arrays. You can call the count method to get the integer count of how many items there are in the dictionary. And if you just type my dict dot and then go down, you can see various functions that you can call with the dictionary. Definitely take a look at these, play around. I obviously won't cover all of them, but these are just some of the things you can do with a dictionary. So I definitely suggest taking a look at all the various functions and methods that exist. Anyways, that's it for my side, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.